many haven't realized that we're in the midst of an unprecedented shift, where we're not just witnesses but participants in history. Such historical turning points come around maybe once every 500 years. Why say this? Because the world has entered an era of great competition. What's this great competition? It's the rise of various forces competing. For today's international situation, it means constant conflicts among nations, resulting in relative chaos, the gradual collapse of the existing international order, and the continual brewing of a new international order. The fundamental reason for the world entering this era of great competition is that the existing world order no longer suits the current global landscape's development. Perhaps many sense this atmosphere, the current international situation grows increasingly chaotic. Though there hasn't been an eruption termed the Third World War, conflicts of varying scales persist and even intensify. From the Russia-Ukraine conflict to crises in Serbia, the Arab Spring, Israeli-Palestinian conflicts, India-Pakistan clashes, issues in the Korean Peninsula, Taiwan Strait, South China Sea, and numerous perennial conflicts across African nations, it's evident that the outbreak of numerous conflicts proves the inadequacy of the current international order for today's world. This imbalance and conflicts arise from the irrationality of the current international order. In this video, we'll discuss the following regarding the global situation, U.S. hegemony, Russia's desire to change the old world order, China's drive to establish a new international order. The present international order, established post-Cold War, is led by the United States, centered on American hegemony. U.S. hegemony comprises three aspects. First is financial hegemony, primarily the currency system led by the dollar. Through this system, the U.S. can independently raise or lower the dollar exchange rate, expand or contract the printing of dollars, effectively exploiting the world. Its dominance in finance and the economy enables it to transfer financial crises. For instance, the 2007 subprime crisis was shifted indirectly by the U.S. By printing excessive dollars, raising prices of high-value-added exports, and suppressing import prices, indirectly sparking the color revolutions of the Arab Spring. The second aspect is military hegemony. The U.S. possesses the world's most powerful armed forces. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, CIPRI, in 2022, the U.S. spent $870 billion on its military, almost 40% of global military spending, increasing by a percentage point from 2021. With 374 overseas military bases in over 140 countries and regions and over 300,000 troops stationed abroad, the U.S. maintains a military presence in major strategic regions globally. Anchored by 11 nuclear-powered supercarriers, it has established maritime dominance, controlling global sea power and key trade routes. The third aspect is ideological hegemony. Led by the U.S., the West upholds universal values. Any country not accepting or following these values faces economic sanctions, color revolutions, or even direct military intervention. However, these countries, after American intervention, either face ruin or continuous internal strife. For instance, the wars in Iraq, civil wars in Libya and Syria, seemingly aimed at toppling dictatorships, were essentially about territorial expansion, occupying oil resources, and strategic locations. The so-called universal values are merely excuses for Western invasions led by the U.S., a facade to legitimize their exploitation of other nations' resources and their global dominance tools. This upheaval signifies the intensifying confrontation between Russia and Western nations and China's rise. When the old order no longer fits the world's current development, a new order inevitably emerges. The process of exploring and forming this new order marks the world's entry into an era of great competition. The only driving forces behind this new order are Russia and China. Russia fervently desires to alter the old world order. This is because in the previous world order constructed by Western nations, Russia was excluded. Since the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Russia has consistently sought to draw close to, even join, the Western camp. During Yeltsin's presidency, there was an all-encompassing alignment with the West in foreign policy, adopting the West's shock therapy. However, this resulted in a severe economic downturn domestically, pushing the nation to the brink of collapse. 
In the early years of Putin's leadership, not only did Russia tacitly allow NATO's eastward expansion, it even contemplated joining NATO. Yet, harsh realities informed Russia that it remained an anomaly in the eyes of Western nations. The so-called shock therapy and NATO's eastward expansion were actually means to weaken and suppress Russia. In reality, it's impossible for Western nations to embrace Russia. For European countries, Russia's vast territory and significant influence in politics, military, and economy pose a threat to Western interests. It's a formidable political force with independent political and economic demands, inevitably encroaching upon Western interests. Additionally, being an unmovable neighbor to European countries, Russia has historically engaged in prolonged conflicts with various European nations. Hence, Western countries haven't altered their hostility toward Russia, nor have they eased their vigilance. Due to practical needs, they can only compromise and concede some interests for geopolitical security. For the United States, Russia's strategic nuclear arsenal has long been a major concern. Russia engages in confrontation and maneuvers against the U.S. In regions like the Arctic, Middle East, and Far East, consuming significant American resources. Preventing the weakening of Russia is a consensus between the United States and European countries. However, the U.S. holds a markedly different stance toward Russia compared to European countries. European nations border Russia, hence they refrain from excessively provoking Russia, following a policy of precaution and gradual weakening. Europe also doesn't wish to be strategically dominated by the United States in matters of national security, aiming to form a collective force, namely the EU, to ensure its own security and maximize its interests internationally. Since the United States and Russia do not share a direct border and lack a strong geopolitical crisis sense, there's significant strategic flexibility regarding the Russian issue. The US also doesn't wish for European countries to unite and form a collective force. Such a move would not only weaken U.S. dominance within the Western camp but could turn the United EU into a strategic competitor. There's even a possibility of reconciling with Russia over certain interests. The U.S. logic is that the current European countries are far from forming a collective force strong enough to counter Russia. By continuously creating geopolitical crises and pushing Europe into the foreground, strategic pressure is applied on Russia, leading to internal conflicts between both sides. Consequently, this weakens Russia while slowing down the EU's formation of a collective force. The European countries yet to form a united front will inevitably rely on the US, ensuring the strategic dominance within the Western camp remains in American hands. This elucidates why the US tirelessly weakens and confronts Russia. However, at least in the aspect of preventing and weakening Russia, the United States and Europe can maintain consensus because both aim to eliminate a major strategic adversary. The actions and strategic intentions of Western countries, led by the United States, have made Russia completely aware of their true intentions. Consequently, Russia's stance has begun to change. The 2008 Russia-Georgia conflict, the 2011 Syrian civil war, the 2014 Ukraine crisis, and the 2022 Russia-Ukraine conflict all exhibit Russia's strategic counterattacks. Especially the 2022 Russia-Ukraine conflict, it led to a complete confrontation between Western countries and Russia, almost rendering Russia as the archenemy of the entire Western world. Russia senses an unprecedented strategic pressure and tremendous unfair treatment. The world's opinion is almost entirely controlled by Western countries, deliberately ignoring the fact that Russia was forced to retaliate against NATO and Ukraine for its national security. Instead, there's a deliberate focus on criticizing Russia's aggression toward Ukraine. It can be said that currently, more than anyone else, Russia desires to change the prevailing international order dominated by Western countries. If Russia aims to change the old international order due to unprecedented national security crises and unjust treatment, China's motives are more about benefiting all of humanity. This isn't some lofty rhetoric, it's rooted in the bitter lessons from China's humiliations over the past century and the insights gained from its long-standing economic development. Since the Opium Wars, China, due to its closed-off policies, lack of global engagement, and conservative ideologies, lagged behind and missed the wave of the Second Industrial Revolution. This resulted in China's backwardness compared to the world, leading to heavy costs, continuous wars, territorial concessions, and almost facing national extinction. China realized the importance of engaging with the world, and this understanding is pivotal in its current development.
Undeniably, the achievements of today owe much to the wisdom and hard work of the Chinese people themselves. However, economic globalization and trade exchanges with various countries significantly contributed to our development. Recognizing that driving the development of all nations worldwide is the key to benefiting oneself genuinely, China formulated strategic initiatives like the Belt and Road. This vision aims to benefit the global community by aiding in the construction of various infrastructures, power plants, roads, bridges, ports, and more, to elevate the economic development of involved countries. This fosters mutual benefits and prosperity without attaching any political conditions. It's a genuinely beneficial strategy for the development of all nations. This stands in stark contrast to the paid services of Western countries intervening in other nations' internal affairs, exploiting and siphoning off smaller economies, imposing economic sanctions, and shifting financial crises. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We genuinely appreciate your support.